Hi, my name's Lucy and I'm an interior designer and I thought I'd take a few minutes to let you know a little bit about me and how I got into interior design. So, I've been an interior designer for around 17 years now, which is a long time, and I really love my job. I feel very lucky to do this job. Um, as a child, I always had an interest in art and design technology, and I think I knew from a young age that I wanted to be an interior designer. I was always redecorating my bedroom, spending my pocket money on decorative accessories for my bedroom, and I also had a real interest in architecture and buildings and design as well. Um, my mum and dad said that I was always moving my bedroom around um, and seeing which way it worked out best. So um, yeah, I think I was destined to be an interior designer. Um, so after school, um, well, during school, I um, I did uh, art A-level as one of my A-levels. And then after I finished school, I went on to do an art foundation course for a year. I then went and did an interior architecture degree, which was four years, which was great. Um, and as part of those four years I did a work placement to get some work experience which was really cool because I went out to China to do that so yeah that was pretty cool designing out in China. Um, after I'd finished my degree um, I then got a job in a um, for a commercial design company so um, we did designs for bars and restaurants and hotels so um, yeah I got to develop loads of really cool concepts put together lots of mood boards but then also do lots and lots of technical drawings and floor plans as well which really um, helped the builders turn that design into reality to so you know help them put things together on site so um, I think one of the favourite parts of my job was um, visiting building sites. So you, that's where you can see your drawings start coming to life and start seeing these interior schemes develop. So that's really exciting. And then the absolute best part of my job um, was turning up to those um, projects once they were finished and seeing people enjoy the space. So people dining in the restaurants, drinking in the bars that um, I designed with my, with my team. So um, yeah, I think that was definitely the best bit of the job. So I joined my bespoke room just over five years ago and now I'm a residential interior designer so my bespoke room help um, people design their homes which is really cool. They've got this very clever platform that means that we have designers working all over the country in their own homes and they can design for other people's homes over the internet video calls and we've got a very cool platform which means our designers can present um, their designs to the clients in a really cool way. So um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit now about the role of an interior designer um, and then I'll go through some other videos which will show you how to be your own interior designer as well. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy. So let's start by talking about what an interior designer does. Interior designers make interior spaces functional and safe as well as making them look good as well. They design the very best layout, select the best materials, and including lighting and colours, along with furniture and fittings, to really make the space the best it can be. So interior designers do a lot of things. So I'm gonna just talk about a few of the things that interior designers do on a day-to-day -day basis. And also talk about the different types of interior designers. So we've got des um, designers who design commercial spaces. So that's bars or restaurants, hotels, shops. It can be offices, schools, hospitals as well. Um, basically any, any buildings that um, the public use um, have to be designed by an interior designer. So you can see some really cool um, restaurant design there. Um, and this is a really fab ice cream parlor as well in London. So yeah, all this has had to be designed by an interior designer. Also, interior designers design residential spaces, so people's homes as well. Um, so you can see some examples here of a really cool kitchen design we've done at My Bespoke Room and a very fun um, downstairs toilet. Um, so yeah, designers design 
commercial spaces and residential spaces. So what do they have to do? They specify materials and finishes. So that might be floor finishes, wall finishes, um, colours, uh, fabrics. Um, yeah, materials covers a lot of things. They have to be really good at space planning. So drawing floor plans, working out um, which, which plan works best for a room and thinking practically when they're doing that as well. They also have to do joinery details. So they're very detailed technical drawings um, to show the tradesperson how things are going to be put together. So maybe you would have to do, um, if you were doing a bar or a reception desk, you'd have to do joinery details. So really go into the detail of how that works and how that fits together. And they have to pull together complete design schemes. So think about the space as a whole and de develop design concepts and ideas, um, especially in commercial spaces, you know, come up with a cool idea, which we call a concept and develop that into a design. Also, they might manage projects on site as well. So they spend a lot of time on building sites, going back and forth and checking that um, the, the building work is coming on alongside their drawings and um, it's developing how they, how they want it to develop and look and work. And also they style spaces as well. So interior stylists might go in and style a space for a photo shoot or just style a space for a client and add those all important finishing touches. There's lots more things they do as well, but uh, there's just um, a summary of some of the fun things that interior designers do on a day to day basis. So next, I think it's important to look at what skills an interior designer needs and they need lots of different skills. So first of all, it's quite obvious they need to be a creative person. But they also need to be really good at listening because you have to listen to what the client needs, whether that's a commercial client who you're designing their bar and restaurant for, or whether it's um, a child that you're designing their bedroom for. You have to really be good at listening to what your client's needs are. You also need to be a practical thinker as well, because you can have all these amazing, crazy ideas, which is really good to have all these creative ideas, but you have to think practically, will that practically work in the space? So that's super important. And also you need to have the ability to work under pressure. You sometimes have quite tight deadlines or things have to change a little bit. Parts of your design might have to change because things on site or in the building are slightly different and have had to change. So you need to kind of think on your feet quite often and also work under pressure and to tight deadlines a lot of the time. You need to have good customer service skills. And I think that's linked with being good at listening as well, because um, you're providing a service to your client as well. So you have to be um, yeah, very good at customer service. You need to have a excellent attention to detail as well. That is super important um, being an interior designer because things have to be just right and you need to make sure you've got those measurements right, the materials right and the overall design correct. So an attention to detail is super important. But you also need to be inventive and what I always say is think outside the box, you know, um, just um, don't always think of the obvious, you know, it might be that you have to have an inventive way of um, uh, approaching a problem that's come up on site maybe, or your client wants you to think of something really cool and exciting and a little bit different. So yeah, you have to have an inventive mind. And finally, um, you need to have a really good knowledge of buildings and construction. Um, there's things like building regulations you need to know about. You often work alongside structural engineers and architects as well. So you need to have a really good knowledge of buildings, basically, and the construction industry. So if you like the sound of being an interior designer and feel like you've got some of those skills I've just spoken about, watch the next video because you can see an example of an interior design project and then you can check out the fab competition that we're running by watching video three. So thanks for watching guys, bye.